I don't swear a lot to my videos. Initially, it was to avoid as much yellow dollar sign as possible, but as time went on, I actually find a lot more joy in dodging the demonetization hammer. If I hate someone, I can't always drop the F-bomb in a video, but I can say that I would personally drown you in the landfill full of the unwashed socks of Davy Jones. If you want to see me swear like a sailor though, you can check out my stream at Saturday 7pm Eastern Time. Stay tuned, where we're gonna be talking about Genshin Impact hooplas and the apparent boycotts that are happening. Going back to swearing, a lot of content creators on YouTube refrain from swearing because monetization concerns, which is perfectly understandable, but the thing is, it's not just the swearing that people are worried about. YouTube also doesn't like you when you have any controversial words that involve controversial topics that might get detected by YouTube's algorithm. There was one time where YouTube decides to demonetize any video that mentions the cause of the current year pandemic problem. Some content creators dodge it with very creative terms like human malware that managed to get past the monetization bots, but for those who said it at the time, had their channel turn yellow and their income taken away from them. Thankfully, YouTube is improving on this particular area, and this is one of the few times where I would actually praise YouTube for doing something right. I also love the video chapters thing. That's a great feature, YouTube. I've been using that for a while now. Anyway, according to YouTube's new update for the advertiser-friendly content, they're expanding monetization on educational, documentary, or news content that may include violent stuff, drug stuff, or other sensitive stuff. They're also expanding monetization for objective discussions of controversial issues as long as it's non-graphic, adult theme humor, and the usage of moderate profanity. But there are more controversial topics than the current year pandemic that the monetization bots won't like you to talk about. A topic that was frequently discussed on YouTube was allegations of inappropriate behaviors. Some of these behaviors can involve engaging in intimate activities without the consent of one of the party. Some of these can lead into physical harm towards both parties. Some of the parties concerned in this could also be under the age of 18. I would love to describe these situations graphically, your honor, but graphic descriptions would greatly upset the YouTube bots. Besides, as long as people get the message, I don't see why we should worry about not using those words. And that brings me to the next type of nasty words that YouTube will censor. Okuyasu, I heard it as clear as day. This sick fuck said the n-word. Uh, I just remembered I have a big dirt racist! The slurs are of course not allowed within the confines of YouTube's green dollar territory, because those slurs are considered hateful language. There's no place for any sorts of hateful or derogatory content in this platform, content that spread hateful rhetoric or discriminate against people based on their physical characteristic, their religious beliefs, etc. Or at least that's what the rules tell me. Personally, I don't mind people saying slurs, even if the slurs are directed towards me. Actually, especially if the slurs are directed towards me. Why? Because without the freedom of these people saying what they say, I and so many other people wouldn't have been able to determine what kind of person they are. So if there's a person that come to me and say an offensive slur, however my reaction would be, I'll know exactly what kind of person they are. I'm actually more afraid of the kinds of people who chose not to use slurs and try to be kind to you and put you in a comfort zone before stabbing you in the back. At least the people using slurs make it very clear that I should avoid them and not take them seriously. But the thing is, I get it. There are gonna be people who are offended with not just slurs, but also hateful or derogatory messages in general. Unfortunately, we cannot stop people into being douchebags on the internet and especially in real life. There will always be people online who will hate you and will make whatever hateful messages they can to make sure that you are pissed off and agitated. While I do think that you are allowed to say whatever you want to say, I don't think it's wise for you to abuse that privilege, because anything you say on the internet can and will be used against you. While it is satisfying to send hateful messages to the person you hate, it's very rarely a good tactic to truly bring your opponent down, in the same way that ad hominem is rarely a good tactic to counter a person's argument. Some people will even use the hateful messages that were sent to them as a way to play the victim and gain fake sympathy to the people on the internet. Some of them will pull off that tactic to hide from actual criticisms. And yet, we still have these people who say these hateful messages, spout these bigoted slurs, and continue to discriminate people based on arbitrary characteristics. Unfortunately, this is a human issue. We can't eradicate all crimes in the world in the same way we can't eradicate all hate in the world. All we can do is to protect ourselves from it and make sure that we don't get ourselves too involved in any of the hate. If only there's some sort of a program that can mitigate these hate, well ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, you're 
wishes have come true. Intel will come in to solve the problem of these hateful messages in this digital landscape that we live in. So there was a Game Developers Conference or GDC showcase video from last March from Intel where they talk about gaming related stuff because in case you missed it, Intel is one of the leading manufacturers of CPUs, SSDs, and many other PC components. The video in question received loads of dislikes and the comment section was disabled too. That got me intrigued on what's going on. It can't be because they suggested something dumb. Can it? Across the board and across the globe, players raised concerns about witnessing and experiencing toxicity. Oh, I think I see where this is going. So the video recounts the experience of a bunch of game developers. They love gaming and they love to play video games, but they've had really bad experiences to the point where some of them stop playing for a while. The people can be really mean towards them, and especially the people on the other side of the opposing team. Those people are just extra mean. Some of the people being discussed don't mind the swearing or even the creative insults, but some of them crosses the line to the point where it's no longer fun. And I I assume all of them don't know how to operate the mute button. The video continues to say that toxicity not only ruins the fun of the games, but it also has a more dire impact. According to the Anti-Defamation League, or the ADL, there are 22% of people who quit because of the harassment out of the 1,000 US gamers aged 18 to 45 that were surveyed. And that's fine. No, really, that's fine. As I said before, people are going to be mean to you on the internet, and if some people can't handle it, they are well within their rights to quit, which is a much better solution than a mute button. Gaming is not an essential thing for everyone. If people can't handle the toxicity of other people playing the games, they are absolutely welcome to leave. But here's one counter argument that was commonly said to that argument, and also the mute button argument. If we mute the chats or quit the video games, we are only ignoring the problem. We need to be able to recognize that bigotry and discrimination is a problem that happens in video games and we need to address them immediately and find a way to fix them and punish those who are responsible for committing it. First off, you can address the issues of bigotry and discrimination in video games without the needs of forcing yourself through a multiplayer game with all the chats on. You can mute these chats off or even quit video games in general and still talk about these issues and still recognize that there is a problem with the community. Second, Yes, there is a problem with the community. It's just that it's a multifaceted problem that cannot be fixed in the game. As I said before, it's a human issue. We can't eradicate hate in the same way we can't eradicate crime. The best fix we have right now is to educate people to not be hateful and not do crime. And for our own sanity, make sure that you don't lose your minds hearing people saying hateful stuff at you. I mean, if all the players mute the other players, no one is going to hear anyone spouting bigotry. It's it doesn't solve the societal problem, but at least it doesn't make you go insane. This is the sort of thing that warrants people to propose draconian solutions like having all of your identity to be exposed on the internet like you're an average Facebook user. I get it. It's nice to know the identity of the person who constantly barrage you with hateful messages, find out where the person live and contact their schools, employees, or family members to make sure that they gain their comeuppance. It's messed up to everyone else, but I get why someone can feel satisfaction out of doing it. However, However, that same action can also be done by those people towards the victims and towards other innocent people. The more you try to attack the perpetrators, the less safe people are. So what do you think is the solution, Intel? Well, at least Intel recognizes that it's a complex problem, and they too realize that technology isn't the complete answer. But they believe that it can mitigate the problem while deeper solutions are resolved. So they decided to combine an AI that detects toxicity with Intel's hardware accelerated speech recognition. With the combined power of the two, they created an AI that can recognize whether or not someone says anything hateful or bigoted in the voice chat. This hate speech detection software is called Bleep, and it's genuinely one of the most hilarious things I've seen this year. The software is entering beta, and it's going to be supported with the latest generation of Intel laptops and desktop platforms, or at least in this particular version. So shame to all of the old Intel users and all of the Ryzen hardware users who have to deal with the toxicity for now, the only thing that they can do is to press the mute button and 
Actually, there's a much better solution. So here's how the software works. It's pretty freaking funny. You can turn the software on and the software will attempt to recognize the speeches that are being sent on the voice chat. Not only that they will recognize some of the speeches, you also have the option to set how much filter that you want to do towards the voice chats and in what particular topics that you want the software to censor, such as ableism, body shaming, name calling, misogyny, etc. But my favorite part of this entire thing is the fact that it has a dedicated N-word switch. <laughs> What are you doing, Intel? So the N-word is an on and off switch, but the rest of them are sliders. Yeah, sure, I do want to hear some name calling in the chat, but not all of them. I do want to hear some misogyny in the chat, but not all of them. I mean, I thought these things are very heinous and toxic things. Wouldn't it be more appropriate if we just have an on and off switch to all of them? Why does it have to be a slider? And why is only the N-word specifically that has an on and off switch? What kind of person says, yeah, I do want to hear some racism, but I don't want to hear the n-word. That's just going too far. Intel recognizes that this solution won't solve the problem, but they also believe that it's a step to the right direction. I agree, Intel. It is a step to the right direction, and that direction being a waste of time, money, and resources. The players already have the power to control their experience in video games. They can just mute the voice chat or the chat in general. They can just play another video game, especially one that doesn't involve other players. Players. Those solutions are not only significantly easier, but it doesn't require an Intel hardware. And this is assuming that this entire thing works. What if the AI mistakenly thinks certain innocuous words are slurs? What if we're talking about the traps that we built in a game and the AI mistakes it as a hateful slur against trans people? What if we as a society decide to create new hateful slurs that consist of words that are commonly used in everyday life? Uncle Tom can be used as a slur, but what if there's someone who has an uncle and is actually named? Name Tom. I do believe that there are people here with good intentions. I just think that this is not the right solution for the entire thing. Even Kotaku acknowledges that this is a really stupid solution. While they too also complain how people have the option to fine tune the categories, I feel like they did it because it gives people the choice to listen to hateful messages. I wouldn't be surprised if they just say straight up that everyone should get this feature turned on by default. And by that point, might as well just turn on the mute button. So yeah, people on the internet are gonna be hateful and bigoted and Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of ways around it. It's just one of those pesky human nature that we can be very hateful towards others. We can be very bigoted towards others. We can also get agitated to the point of physical harm or ending someone's life. Doesn't make them okay, which is why most people strive to be not hateful and bigoted and encourage others to not be hateful and bigoted. While society continues to become hateful towards others, thankfully in this digital world, we have the power to at least tune out of the toxicity and the bigotry through the many features that let us to mute these people away and kick them out of our environment and our range of hearing. Intel's proposed solution is a waste of so much time, money, and resources that anyone would have been served much better with a mute button and also not talking to strangers on the internet. But hey, at least they are listening to the customer. Oh wait, they don't. Never mind.